Okay, um, Nigel Jenkins in his book Real Swansea says that to understand Swansea you have to come and visit the high street. So you can read a lot about Swansea from this high street. Um, he then goes on to say if you mess with the high street, for instance by moving, shopping and retail to out of town industrial centres, um, then Swansea as a whole loses its balance. Um, now this was, once upon a time, at the turn of the 20th century, a really significant street. And in photos from that period we can see pretty awnings on all of the shop fronts, lots of advertising boards and a tram which in 1900 or 1902 became an electric tram taking people up and down the street. So we've got to try and imagine from this desolate, run-down street today how this would have been one of the most significant and important streets in the city. So it lies one mile from the sea where people would be coming up from the ships to drink and enjoy themselves and it's 169 miles from London. So at the top of this street, if you imagine it as a long spine, the top of the street lies the train station and at the bottom there is the medieval castle. So it connects two really significant landmarks in the city. I mentioned that it was run down. Um, just to give you an example of that, uh, a flat for sale here that sold in May 2015 went for £71,000. Another bought in July 2017 went for £60,000. So significantly under the um, average house and flat prices for the UK or for Wales. Despite many of the shops such as this one being boarded up, this is an old Argos store, there are nevertheless signs of life on this high street and signs of small, interesting, independent ventures. Um, so uh, we'll be going to visit um, Volcano Theatre later, also the Elysium, the new art gallery, there's also a new record and vinyl shop called Tangled Parrot. And there are small cosmopolitan stores, uh, a world food store, uh, a Turkish restaurant, a Japanese restaurant. So there are signs also of Swansea's cosmopolitan culture on this street. This field trip concentrates on Swansea High Street and we're engaging today with Swansea's urban atmospheres through the site of this street. Now, there are four themes for this course um, that we're especially attuned to. They are landscape, environment, community and heritage. Um, this concept of atmospheres, I think, helps us think about all of these. Helps us think about how does the street feel today? What are its histories? What has made it feel like that? Um, what is its environment? What is its place in the city? What is its significance to the city? And what's the sense of community in the shops and in the new student housing development further up the street? So all these four themes in the course can be engaged through the concept of atmospheres. What are the atmospheres of Swansea High Street? What's interesting about High Street is that we can see several attempts at regenerating the city through the arts and from the bottom up through uh, grassroots or cooperative initiatives. Um, so one interesting example of that is the Volcano Theatre, which is here behind me. And they've been based here since around 2014, but they are a theatre company that's been going for over 25 years. Now, this store um, earlier in the 20th century was Lewis's store. It was apparently a very important shop. Uh, later it became an Iceland supermarket building and when that closed down Volcano was able to take over the lease. So their 
theatre is housed in the old deep freezer part of the Iceland supermarket building. And what they do here is run a cooperative um, open art space for the people of Swansea. So there are dance classes held there, art exhibitions, as well as theatre shows and performances and comedy and so on put on. So this is a really interesting example of regeneration, not through a massive multi-million pound initiative, but through something quite modest, but that nevertheless makes a huge difference to the feeling and atmosphere of this street. Volcano have led several projects to try and beautify the street, to make it a more pleasant place to be and to walk and make it a more colourful place. So we can see examples of how they worked with um, art students at Trinity College St David's to cover the utility boxes in wrapping paper. That was a really nice project which just brought a, brought a little bit of glamour and colour to the street. Again, something really modest, but that has made a difference to people's everyday life on this street. So they developed lots of those initiatives as part of an Arts Council run project called From the Station to the Sea. And you can Google that project, you can look it up and find out more about things that they did. They also closed off the street and held um, festivals for families and children with poetry, uh, circus acts, all sorts of stuff going on. So this, uh, really interesting theatre company has been responsible for um, many regeneration initiatives and for changing the feel of this street. Um, at this end of the street, so we're now close to the train station, you really can't miss these enormous um, purpose-built student housing blocks that have gone up over the past uh, two years or so. Uh, I was talking to Joe Rees, a PhD student in our department this morning, uh, who's doing his um, PhD on these developments. And he was telling me that over a hundred million pounds or so far have been um, um, been spent in Swansea on these new accommodation blocks. So there's a new one going up here in what was an old car park. There's one already open just at the end of High Street here and going wrapping all around the block. Now, many of the local businesses have been hopeful about bringing students into the city in this way. So perhaps it might mean that they spend more money in the local cafes and services. However, in this one in particular, uh, we understand that it's um, fully, um, like very full in terms of the services that they offer. So they have a cafe, they have a gym, they have a cinema room and games room on site. So it's very much a world within the block where it's very self-contained. People don't need to leave and go out and use the local services. So it'll be really interesting to watch over the next few years how, um, how this changes the feel of the city centre and of High Street in particular. Okay, this is number 156 High Street and it's called the Palace Theatre, a really amazing triangular shaped building, just like, like the flat iron building in New York City. But this building is actually older than that one. It was first opened in 1888 as the Swansea Pavilion Music Hall, then changed its name in 1892 to become the Swansea Empire Music Hall, then in 1904, the Palace of Varieties. Now, it has a really famous history. Apparently, Charlie Chaplin performed here, as did Anthony Hopkins. Apparently, that was one of Anthony Hopkins' first uh, debuts as an actor was held here at the Palace Theatre. Now, it's in quite a state of disrepair today, um, but it has recently been bought by the council. So it's come back from private ownership to public ownership 
ownership and they've had planning permission to do up and restore the building and to protect its heritage. So inside, if you look online, you can see some photos of the inside. Um, there's, um, there's a theatre space and that's part, the part of the preservation and planning plans are to keep um, the theatre intact um, but this will become mainly an office space so for new um, companies and tech companies in particular to take an office in this building. Um, there's no call at the moment, there's no demand for live theatre in the way that they used to be once upon a time. So they don't think that they will pack out this theatre um, with live audiences. Now, of course, I wonder how COVID might have changed that desire, whether we will have a desire to um, step away from our box sets or from our streaming devices after this pandemic, and whether we will want to gather in venues like this again. During the 20th century, it apparently became a cinema and then later a bingo hall and then a club where people went dancing. So people have gathered here throughout the 20th century and it has seen more than one pandemic. So this building would have witnessed the pandemic of 1919 as well. Um, thinking more broadly about the destruction and reconstruction of this street and of Swansea more generally. Um, much of High Street was left intact by the Blitz. So there are images available um, which I'll include with this course from the West Glamorgan archives of Swansea High Street after the Second World War and we can see that most of the buildings are standing apart from right down at the bottom towards the castle, so the southwest side of the street. Um, devastatingly, 230 people were reported to have died in the Blitz, um, which took place between um, the 19th and 21st of February 1941 so it has just been commemorated the 70 year anniversary this February however in February 2021 on the 22nd of February 2021 751 people have already died from the Covid pandemic and those are the people who've died um, where Covid has been put on the death certificate so we can begin to imagine the scale of what we're living through at the moment that it is already three times the number of people who died in Swansea during the Blitz. Uh, one of the questions we will be asking is to what extent this pandemic will not only impact the social lives of the people of the city and families but also the urban and material fabric the buildings the shops what remains after this year well, a student on his gap year set, set it up uh, he's 21 and um, it was only supposed to be a pop-up cinema but it proved so successful that he wanted it to continue when he went back to uni and uh, so I met up with him to see about getting funding to keep it going because that's my background and um, I was so inspired by the place it felt like he had made it for me because I've always been full of ideas but never had a, a vehicle to bring them to fruition so um, I was uh, managed to get a business loan and I ended up buying the business from him. We concentrated on film in the beginning but now we offer uh, live music, uh, we do uh, clothes swapping events, we do fundraisers, art exhibitions um, and we do open air cinema as well so um, so yes it, and the parties we get a lot of uh, parties and even uh, businesses will hire us for like a team building um, day or something. 
we've done weddings, we've done uh, surprise birthdays, you've even had uh, surprise engagement uh, offerings as well, so proposals, that's been uh, really nice to be part of that, but there's um, a real community feel, I suppose. We like um, our audience to take part and become involved, and we have like a film request book on the bar, and uh, yes, we're very open to ideas from other um, people for different events, so. Yes, well, I guess because we offer an experience rather than a sort of passive, um, a formal um, environment for people to watch a film. So in the mainstream cinemas, they're just a, a number, basically. But uh, here it's about building up the atmosphere. So the student who set it up, his intention was for people to stick around after the film to encourage people to talk about what they've just seen, etc. But uh, people are so programmed to leave, they just, uh, we tried doing that and it didn't work. So now we get people to stay in the bar uh, for the hour and build up anticipation about the film and uh, what they're going to see. And um, yeah, you know, people get used to our faces as well. So, um, so yes, it's more, uh, much more of a community feel. And it's also easier, because it's such a versatile space, it's easier for us to socially distance as well. We haven't had to make any alterations in that regard. Um, I know that VIEW has closed as a result. Um, so uh, the Odeon is literally the only other cinema in Swansea now. So. So yes, yeah, I guess it's quite a sort of organic, um, homely feel, I suppose. I really love uh, repurposing things and uh, like we've got 90-year-old uh, cinema seats in the cafe. Yeah, in the cinema, we've got the seats are made out of pallets, so they're more like a two-seater sofa, but people really feel at home, especially the kids, you know, they'll kick their shoes off and... Uh, not be there with bare feet and uh, yes it's uh, a very different sort of um, uh, yeah environmentally uh, driven I guess aesthetic so um, and someone said it's quite scan it's got a Scandinavian uh, feel to it uh, that might be something to do because I lived in Oslo for six winters so maybe that's had a bit of a an influence as well so <laughs> Yes, we, we like to do that a lot, actually. We like to um, champion other local businesses and it seems on this on the high street there's been a lot of regeneration. Uh, coastal housing have had a lot to do with that. Um, so it's almost like they're trying to uh, develop a, an alternative sort of art quarter then, if you like. So there's Volcano, there's the Elysium, and um, yeah, there's uh, a couple of bars and coffee shops and things down the high street. But there's a really nice atmosphere and there's new student uh, flats as well. So, so yes, it's a proper sort of student vibe, I guess. Well, I came to Swansea in 1998, but I knew Swansea before then. Um, when I first came here, I wouldn't have dreamed of walking down this street, except maybe to go to the station to catch a train. And the reason for that was, first of all, there was really nothing much here. There were uh, uh, some shops, but they were very poor shops on the whole. You wouldn't want to seek them out if you were going to do your shopping. And the second reason was, uh, particularly late at night, it wasn't terribly, it wasn't dangerous, but it wasn't a nice place to wander down and you wouldn't have chosen to, to wander down it. So that's how it used to be and it's changed such an enormous amount since then. Um, in fact, I'd go so far as to say that you would seek the high street out if you were looking for a lively place in Swansea and a lively experience. If you want to go to a cinema or a volcano or somewhere else, you would seek it out instead of avoiding it. And I think that's the big difference. Yeah, there have been, there've been several attempts over the years to use, use art to regenerate uh, the city. Um, and one really good one has been Locus International, uh, which has brought public art into the city. And that's over, over the years, it's been going a long time. That's been very useful. Uh, we've had one, uh, Jeremy Deller's wonderful wall, uh, More Poetry is Needed, which the council unfortunately demolished. Yeah. Um, and of course the council did put in a bid uh, for, to be a city of culture about three years ago, four years ago, um, which was unsuccessful. 
and uh, I was very sorry about that because it should have been successful and it would have been if it had been a bit better bid. Um, but by far the best attempt to regenerate through art is in fact the high street and um, it's, it's the reason it's been successful is that it hasn't been an entirely top-down operation and the council although it's been involved has not been fully involved that's a big difference so it's the success has relied on two things it seems to me one is uh, coastal housing or whatever it was before it was coastal housing um, because they have money and clout but they also have imagination and creativity and they know that they can do things apart from building houses or flats uh, so they've been absolutely crucial and then the other major factor is the people on the street uh, creative people uh, not just people in cinemas and theatres and so on but just people who open cafes creative people people who can see the opportunities of really trying to do something with a really interesting street and I think it's that combination of uh, money and influence and clout from a, quite a big organisation now and then a whole host of people on the ground doing things. That has made the difference, not the council. Uh, in a way, uh, Swansea's been a dry run for what a lot of other cities are going to face post-Covid. Because uh, Swansea had already lost a lot of big shops, it was already run down, it didn't really have a city centre, retail city centre before. Um, so it's going to be no different afterwards, it's going to be worse. In fact, Depen Debenhams are going to close, the biggest shop in the city centre. Um, and I don't think these shops are coming back. I think our patterns of shopping are going to change for good. And uh, shops won't disappear, but they'll be different shops. They'll be smaller shops, they'll be local shops, they'll be niche shops, they'll be shops for the neighbourhood. Uh, I hope, anyway. And um, that will have an impact on how city centres develop in the future, it seems to me. And Swansea's a really good case in point, because I don't think there's any point in going back to the old world the council thinks it can go back to the old, old world. It's building new shops now. I, best, I bet they'll be empty. Uh, they won't be full of, of chain stores anyway. Uh, so if I were the council, I'd be getting hold of the landlord of um, uh, Debenhams and I'd be saying, right, we're going to use that huge space for something completely different and something Swansea-ish, not a cha another chain shop. So I think that's how, that's how I think it should change. Whether it will, I don't know. But I think it's a big opportunity for places like Swansea uh, to build something completely different um, and, um, and better in the future. Well, this is the city deal, I think, when money's coming from central government. But um, it, it's going on big projects. And I think that is dubious um, in a place like Swansea, at least. It's going into more shopping. That's not a good idea. Um, it's going into things like the digital arena. Uh, well, the digital arena might work. Uh, but who knows because nobody knows what it's going to be why is it called a digital arena there's never been a proper consultation process with the people of Swansea a, a meaningful one to find out what people really want uh, if there are going to be these grand uh, projects um, and for me uh, I think it would make much more sense to use the money uh, more broadly on lots of wider smaller projects rather than bundle it all into huge uh, great projects great buildings uh, we've also got to bear in mind that um, you know once we've beaten COVID, we've got to beat beat uh, climate change, and uh, that too I think has a bearing on what Swansea should be in future. You know, do we need more green in Swansea and less concrete? The, the council is very keen on building uh, concrete and more roads, uh, but uh, let's have less roads, less co less concrete. Let's have more open spaces. Well, Swansea's got lots of parks, uh, but not in the centre. The centre's actually uh, very devoid of green. And uh, people who, there are plenty of people who live in the centre, but they don't have access, easy access to greenery.